Welcome to Mock Draft Monday. The 2024 draft is coming up, and that means it's time to project what's going to happen in this draft. In this episode, I'm going to go over all possible landing spots for the top 13 quarterbacks in this class, and trust me, it's top 13 for a reason. I'm Chase Keller, and welcome to where every quarterback will land in the 2024 NFL Draft. Enjoy. Alphabetical order gives us Western Kentucky quarterback Austin Reed to start this list. And with his late day three projection, it's not the greatest start. He had a great 2022 season, but he decided to return for 2023 and he did not play up to his own standards. As a result, he's dropped in the rankings. He was a fourth, fifth round pick last year, and now he's like a sixth or seventh round pick. When it comes to teams that need backup quarterbacks, two of them come to mind. First up is the Tennessee Titans. I've thought about the Titans moving forward from Ryan Tannehill this offseason simply because he's a free agent and they've already had to pay him a lot of money. I also have a feeling that a team that is going to draft a rookie quarterback will probably pick up Tannehill for competition think of like Atlanta or New England. So with the slot freeing up in Tennessee, they could use their later round picks to take Reed. Also freeing up possibly the Los Angeles Chargers. Easton Stick has been the backup since 2019 and with Herbert's hand injury, they rolled forward with Stick instead of getting another quarterback in free agency. And we saw how he performed. And with Max Duggan at QB3 who has been on and off the practice squad, they might need a backup quarterback, and Austin Reed is right there. So that's my final prediction. Pick 182 to the Los Angeles Chargers. I promise that the rest of these late round quarterbacks won't take as long as Austin Reed did, so please stay tuned. Up next on this list is Oregon's Bo Nix, a man who's projected to go in the first or second round. Bo Nix is going to be an intriguing prospect as the draft gets closer and we'll see if he can improve his stock using the Senior Bowl. I'm talking about the Senior Bowl in my Mock Draft Monday episode next week, so subscribe if you're interested. But let's get into the potential fits. When it comes to the highest he can be drafted, I don't see him going any higher than Denver at pick 12. It's a good pick for Denver, as it gives them that half-athletic option with good accuracy in the short and medium game. At his ceiling, he could be an elite game manager, especially given some surroundings. As we move forward, he's less of a fit for the Raiders due to the sheer amount of deep threats in that offense and Bonix's arm isn't that great. And then there's the potential round two tag, which I see in the New York Giants. I don't think the Giants should take a quarterback round one. They just extended Daniel Jones and they have bigger needs at other positions. So they could definitely take a quarterback in the second round to have competition. If he does fall to New York in the second round, I would pull that trigger in an instant. And my surprise selection for Bo Nix is the Seattle Seahawks. Geno Smith did not capitalize off his 2022 season and the Seahawks missed the playoffs. With Geno being 33 years old and Pete Carroll being gone, it might be time for some fresh legs in Seattle. Yet, my prediction is actually going to go the New York route, so give me Bo Nix at pick 39 to the New York Giants. Time to move on to USC's Caleb Williams, an extremely hot topic in this class and the potential number one overall pick. Some fans of their respective teams want their team to avoid Williams in the draft. Others will pull the trigger right away. But the biggest question is where he could possibly end up at. It starts with the Chicago Bears at pick one. Some fans tell the team to stay. Others say to trade down and not take a quarterback. If Chicago does take him, they will get a fairly similar version of Fields, except with a stronger arm. Williams plays just like Fields with the pocket presence included, but I think Williams is just as good as Fields is now. But we'll get back to that idea. How about the Washington Commanders at pick two? Chicago could stay at pick one and take generational talent Marvin Harrison Jr., which has Caleb Williams fall to the Commanders at two. 
Chicago could also take Drake May at one, which again, falls Caleb Williams to two. A new head coach, a new GM, and a new front office gets a brand new quarterback as long as they stay at the second pick. Or there's New England at three, which in my opinion is the biggest trade-up candidate here. If Chicago goes quarterback and then Washington goes quarterback, the New England Patriots miss out on one of those two premier quarterback prospects. But if they trade up with Chicago, Caleb Williams is right there, as is everyone else in the draft. And with a new coach and a new culture, this could very much be possible. In fact, that's what I think that will happen. The New England Patriots trade up with the Chicago Bears to pick number one and take Caleb Williams at that slot. Kentucky quarterback Devin Leary won't take too long, and I promise there's a big name quarterback next. The New York Jets fit in as a late round QB3. Sit behind Aaron Rodgers for a couple years, and probably Zach Wilson too since the Jets love him so much. But if you land in New York with the Jets, you do get a good chunk of opportunities. And then there's also the Los Angeles Rams, who took a shot at Stetson Bennett last year and basically missed. Another QB3 opportunity to sit behind a potential Hall of Famer and a guy who might not even be QB2 next year. I think the Jets are more realistic, so they pick up Leary at 252 or 253. And now we have the other big quarterback. North Carolina QB Drake May is projected to be number one in some other mock drafts. And he's probably going to go within those top three picks as well, which is the same as Williams, so I won't talk about them too much. Once again, we have the Chicago Bears who I think are going to trade down, but even if they stay at number one and take a quarterback, I think Caleb Williams is more appealing for them because of his skill set. And if Chicago doesn't trade down, there's still the possibility of Drake May. And if Chicago does do this, they actually get the quarterback that I prefer of those top two guys. So Chicago, don't be too down if you end up landing Drake May. But again, I do think they will trade down, so let's move on to Washington at pick two. If they don't care about the prospect, they'll obviously stay at pick two and just take whichever quarterback is left. But if they do, they will be ringing Chicago immediately and trying to trade up to pick one. Then there's the opportunity if Chicago stays at pick one and takes Marvin Harrison Jr., Williams goes two, which means New England gets Drake May. Or they could trade up to number one and still take Drake May. But there needs to be a projection. As I said, I have New England trading up to pick one and taking Caleb Williams with the first overall pick, which means Drake May falls to Washington at two, and with them desperately needing a quarterback, Washington takes Drake May with the second pick. And right after Drake May, we move on to the third best quarterback in the consensus class, which is Jaden Daniels. We get the treat of Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels within the last four sections. Daniels wasn't even on the scene until his Heisman campaign in 2023, and with his great combination of arm talent and athleticism, teams are going to love him. He could even creep into the top three if everything falls in line, so let's talk about this boatload of opportunities. Beginning with the New England Patriots at pick three, this can really only happen if Chicago stays and goes quarterback, and then Washington goes quarterback, leaving Jaden Daniels at pick three. This also has to happen if the New England Patriots don't think about trading down if they don't get those top two quarterbacks. If the Bears do go Marvin Harrison Jr. at pick one or even pick three, those opportunities expand. First up in the order is the New York Giants at pick six. As I said before, I don't think they should even take quarterback, but if they do, Daniels isn't bad at pick six. I'll be honest. I don't like him as much as consensus does, but I can't project everything off my own list, so let's move on. Then there's the Atlanta Falcons, who hold the 8th overall pick and are one of 4 teams in my eyes that absolutely need to go quarterback. The other 3 being New England, Las Vegas, and Washington. The Falcons desperately need a good quarterback and with a rookie head coach, that is more common of a pair than you may think. And then there's the Bears again if he falls to pick number nine. I'm gonna be honest, if Jaden Daniels finds his way to slip his way to the ninth overall pick, even if Chicago doesn't go quarterback with their first pick, 
they need to go with Daniels at pick nine. They didn't want to take a quarterback earlier, but now they have an option they cannot pass up. Yet, I don't think he comes close to nine. The Arizona Cardinals are actually the key here. They are huge trade down candidates and they could potentially trade down with a big quarterback needy team. Who is that with? The Atlanta Falcons. I think Atlanta trades up from eight to four and takes Jaden Daniels with the fourth overall pick. Now we have another potential round one quarterback in JJ McCarthy. Winning the national championship should automatically raise your draft stock, but McCarthy only completed 10 passes. And as I'm recording this video, JJ McCarthy is actively thinking about entering the draft or staying at school, and he's projected to make a decision today. And this is the day before upload, by the way. Anyways, enough of the talking. Let's begin with the Denver Broncos at pick 12. Russell Wilson worked as a great game manager in 2023, but he was scared to leave the pocket in most of his games. McCarthy can change that memo in a heartbeat. He's a great game manager in my eyes, but he's not afraid to leave the pocket and use his legs, and he's also not afraid to use his arm strength to take deep shots. The Las Vegas Raiders are also on the board, and I think they desperately need a quarterback. We saw how the experiments of Sam Howell and Desmond Ritter went in 2023. We don't need to see the Aiden O'Connell experiment do the same thing in 2024. And then there's the Steelers in the second round. If the Steelers don't believe in Kenny Pickett, I think the Steelers could be a hot spot for McCarthy. And an underrated pick in my opinion might be the New York Jets. We saw how Jordan Love panned out in Green Bay. We could see New York do the same thing to have a mentor behind Rodgers and his successor be super good. And that's where I think he lands. The Jets trade up somewhere in the second round. We will cool down just a little bit now as I don't think Tennessee quarterback Joe Milton will touch the first round. He's a good quarterback, but there are issues with his processing and decision making that will keep him out of that round. Even then, he's going to be looked at in late day two, early day three, so we got to talk about it. Beginning with the Steelers again, if they want to put a fire under Pickett's ass, Milton is a perfect person to do so. I don't think the Steelers should replace Pickett by any means, but if they don't believe in him, I think Milton's a good option to do that. But I don't think he will go there. So how about the Philadelphia Eagles? They have their clear starter and they have Marcus Mariota, but Mariota's contract is up after this season. Milton also reminds me of Tanner McKee a lot the third string quarterback in Philly, but with more athleticism than that pocket passer. But I don't think the Eagles get him either. Who I do think gets him is the Tennessee Titans who land their backup quarterback and don't even have to leave the state. As I mentioned before, they probably won't have Tannehill next year, so they have to look for a new backup. And I do think they get it in Joe Milton before pick 183, but around that area. One of my own underrated quarterback prospects in this class is Florida State's Jordan Travis. His brutal injury to end his collegiate career, along with his age, are two reasons why he dropped to 202 on the consensus big board. But I think he's worth more than that. Let's take a look at the teams. If he goes in the middle of the draft, the Cleveland Browns are a nice landing spot for him. Joe Flacco might not return as Cleveland's QB2 next season, and with Deshaun Watson returning and the DTR experiment not being too hot, Cleveland's looking for a backup. So with the middle of the pack, QB3, possibly QB2, I think Jordan Travis is a good person here. If he goes near the back of the draft like he's projected to, I think the Jaguars or the Buccaneers are good options. Once again, I think Jordan Travis is better than a QB3, which is what those two teams need, but I'm still going to look that way because of consensus. For that reason, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars take Jordan Travis with either pick 194 or pick 210. And now, we have the final first round projected quarterback introducing Michael Penix Jr. His stock has been in question because of the national championship, but the Texas game was the complete opposite. But I think he should be drafted near the top anyways. Let's begin with the Atlanta Falcons. I only think the Falcons should get Penix if they stay at pick eight and they still really need a quarterback. And pair him with the head coach that is creative and likes to take deep shots. 
you know, like a Ben Johnson, but I have them trading up and taking Daniels. So let's move on. We have three straight picks of guys who might take quarterback. Let's begin with the Minnesota Vikings at pick 11. They do have Kirk Cousins, but rumor has it they're looking for a new quarterback already. If they are, Penix is not a bad idea with the 11th pick. Then there's the Denver Broncos at 12th who can try and turn Penix into a game manager given his pocket passer presence. God, that was a tongue twister. And I know Peyton is going to love the strong arm that Penix has. He's going to just fall in love with it. And finally, the Raiders at pick 13. I don't think they should follow the same route that Atlanta and Washington followed in 2023. Instead, they should look for that new franchise guy. And I think Penix is a good option for them at that pick. So, who will swing their bet at Penix in this draft? I think it's going to be the Denver Broncos, who take him with the 12th overall pick. We have three quarterbacks left, so stick in with me here. Let's move on to Tulane's Michael Pratt. The options for the poised and confident quarterback are very similar to the other backup options, so let's breeze through this. Beginning with the Titans, Ryan Tannehill, blah, 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 Joe Milton's already there. Then there's the Chargers, Easton Stick, blah, 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 Max Duggan, blah, 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 and Austin Reed's already there. So I have this idea. Jameis Winston is an unrestricted free agent and might be out of New Orleans. With Derek Carr not doing amazing down there and Pratt staying in states, New Orleans might take a shot at Michael Pratt in the draft. I do like this idea, but I don't think this will happen unless Jameis Winston goes elsewhere in free agency. Someone who I believe is a UDFA prospect but will likely get drafted is Notre Dame's Sam Hartman. Hartman is fifth all time in FBS passing yards, but that might act as a facade. I'm literally just going to name these off. My three potential landing spots are the New York Jets, the LA Chargers, and the Tennessee Titans. But those three teams already have quarterbacks. This makes me believe more and more that Sam Hartman actually won't get drafted this year. And finally, to end this mock draft episode, I have Spencer Rattler out of South Carolina. He used to be sought out as a potential first round pick when he came into college, but after his fall off at Oklahoma and at South Carolina, he's kind of fallen down boards. But he's had a comeback year and he's now projected to be a fourth round pick. So we gotta talk about him. Let's get the Titans and the Chargers out of the way. They already have their backup quarterbacks that I projected to them, but they could still take a shot at Rattler if they don't take who I said they would. There's also the Cleveland Browns, who I have yet to project a backup quarterback to. In Cleveland, Rattler can spend time under Deshaun Watson and possibly even take that starting job if he continues to perform like he has been. Rattler does have nice arm talent, and he could be a really successful backup in the NFL. With that being said, I have the Browns taking Rattler at pick 88. Which quarterback do you want your team to select in the 2024 NFL Draft? Let me know in the comment section below. Wait, are you not subscribed yet? Well, do it now. I release content like this all the time and would really appreciate your support. I'm Chase Keller from Chase Keller Journalism, and I will see you all next time.